it's not enough just to give you symptomatic treatments anymore. We need to have a conversation around why those symptoms are there in the first place so that you can work on fixing that as well. G'day and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I want to show you how you can fix ITB syndrome. And the way that I want to structure this video is I want to talk about a common misconception around ITB stretches and then quickly parlay that into some information about what I think is the best way to mobilize an ITB and decrease those ITB symptoms. But more importantly, as we get to the second half of the video, I want to have a conversation with you guys about why the ITB becomes a problem in the first place. And we're going to touch on this basically by going through three really important exercises that will address the cause of that issue that then goes on to potentially set that ITB up to fail. So please hang around if you're really interested in that sort of stuff. So if you go on to enjoy this video, please consider leaving a like rating down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. If you find this stuff genuinely helpful and interesting, please also consider leaving a super thanks donation on the video. It's just a great way to help support the channel going forward. So with that in mind, the first thing I want to touch on basically is this common misconception about ITB stretches. And that is basically that you can stretch the ITB. Now, what a lot of people don't seem to realize about the ITB is that it's different to it's different tissue to muscle tissue. The ITB is a really robust connected tissue that obviously sits on the outside of the leg. It serves as a muscle attachment for your quads, your hamstrings and your glutes and your hip muscles, but we can't stretch that in the same way that we can stretch tight hamstrings or tight glutes. But what we can do and what we should be doing instead, and this leads me into the exercise that I find really powerful, is we can or we should be attempting to feed some slack into that ITB. By going after restrictions in your quads, your hamstrings, and your hip muscles, we can take out some of the excessive tension in the area that's causing that ITB to be overloaded and irritated. So a great way to do that is if you have a foam roller or a tennis ball or lacrosse ball, what I want you to do with this basically is, as I said, we can feed some slack into that ITB by releasing some restrictions in your quads, your hamstrings, and your hips. Now, I'll show you how to do this for the quads. It's the same technique for your hamstrings and glutes, just with a subtle difference uh, going along, but I'll go through that quickly. So what we wanna do first is we're gonna choose the quads to begin with. It also tends to be the area that's the most tender, the most uncomfortable for people to get a massage or to get pushed into. But we wanna show you how to release that relatively quickly. So the other thing that I want to touch on with foam roller exercises, and it's the same thing with the ball in a sense, is that instead of rolling around, what we wanna get you to do is find a spot that feels a bit tender and restricted, then we wanna use movement to shear that tissue free. So to get my leg out the way here, I'm putting some pressure through that quad slash ITV section, and then I'm using movement to shear that tissue past the roller. So again, only be as hard or as soft as you feel you need to, but do enough of that so you feel like that starts to shear for some of that tissue. So we can do the same thing with your hamstrings, obviously, but instead of bending your knee, we can straighten your leg to open up those hamstrings and get that tissue to uh, release quickly. We do the same thing with your gluteal muscles up the top here. Because of the shape and the boniness of your hips, it is probably better to use a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball up higher. But all you want to do with this is you want to dig the ball in there, move the ball around until you find that you hit something that feels a little bit tender. And then you've got two options here. I'll get you to rotate that whole leg inwards and outwards, or you can bend and straighten that leg. But the goal is the same. We're trying to take the tissue that's restricted, we're trying to shear that tissue free, feed some slack into that ITB to take out some of the, the need for that tissue to be irritated and overloaded. So the important thing we need to talk about here, following on from that exercise, is we need to have a conversation around why that area has become a problem in the first place. It's not enough just to give you symptomatic treatments anymore. We need to have a conversation around why those symptoms are there in the first place so that you can work on fixing that as well. Otherwise, it's unrealistic to expect this to magically go away forever. It may, depending on what's going on in your life, but we can guarantee as much as you can guarantee anything that it's gonna settle quickly if we improve the conditions that, are, that that ITB is working in. So what I wanna to touch on next is we're gonna go through three, three main parts of this conversation that I find clinically get missed a lot when trying to solve ITB syndromes. But I want to put it into context so you can understand why it's there in the first place. So the best way to show you this, I think, is via a squat. So when we're looking at just your basic everyday squat, 
it tells us a lot about how your legs are functioning. And the one thing that I think is really important to look out for for most people is we wanna have a really close look and pay really close attention to what your knee is doing relative to your foot. And what I find clinically is the majority of ITB syndrome patients have a knee that wants to drop inside of that foot. So that can either mean that they're a little bit duck foot and when they're running, when they're moving, the knees might feel like they're going straight, but relative to where their feet are pointing, the knees are still dumping inwards, creating a bad environment for that ITB. The second one is you might have your feet straight, but your knee might just dump in anyway. The reason why this is important is because your tissue is designed to function essentially like a piston, where things are going straight up and down, everything's loaded comfortably. So if we're trying to release a lot of the tightness and the tenderness and the soreness in this area, we need to make sure we're then also trying to put the knee into a better position or give the knee a chance to be in a better position more often to stop that from coming back. So as I mentioned quickly before, there's three things that I think tend to lead us towards this position. We'll start at the ankle because it's the most obvious, is that if your ankle is restricted in any way, as your ankle bends, if you run out of range of motion at your ankle, the only way that you can go further is if you either turn your foot out or your knee caves inwards. And this is obviously a problem because if you're running and consistently in this position all the time, it's a constant overload for that ITB. So we need an exercise to help uh, free that up quickly. And again, if you subscribe to the channel, if you're a fan of the channel, you'll know how beneficial the banded ankle stretch is for ankle restrictions. And again, I really like to have this band above the ankle. I just find that when you're in this dorsiflex position, it biases that capsule far better than being below the ankle, which is what you probably see most often. So all we want to get you to do with this is to stretch your foot out as far as you feel comfortable, lead with your other leg. All the exercise is basically is bending that back ankle as far as you feel comfortable. We want to make sure that that knee isn't caving in and compromising the, the or feeding back into the thing we're trying to change. So when you're in this position, so obviously the band's behind here, make sure that when you bend that back ankle, that that knee isn't wanting to cave in. Make sure that that knee stays out. Even if you're not going as far as that, just make sure that you're at the end range of what you feel comfortable in a good position. By taking away some restrictions at the ankle, it allows the knee to stay in a better position for longer, and it takes away one of the handbrakes that can force it to dump inwards, change the way you load the entire knee, including that ITB. The other two things we want to talk about here is once we've mobilized that ankle, we want to talk about what's happening at the hip because there's two things that can be happening here that tend to be a roadblock for a lot of people. So when you are doing a squat, if you don't have the muscular strength or the muscle control at the hip to hold that knee out into a good position, then the knee's gonna dump inwards a lot more. The natural inclination when there's not as much support at the hip is for that whole leg to collapse inwards. So we wanna go through something that helps improve the activation and the strength of those glute muscles in this position. And interestingly enough, squats are the best way to do that. So what I want you to practice here is I want you to practice keeping your feet straight, screwing your knees out. And what you'll find by doing this is you'll see that your arches will lift up a little bit. You want to maintain that position, squat down as deep as you feel comfortable before you feel like you run into the end of that ankle range or that hip range where you feel like the knee starts to want to cave in. So when you're doing this, feet straight, knees out, maintain that position as low as you feel you can go, come back up again, and keep repeating that process, making sure those glutes are firing the entire time. Now, if this becomes a little bit too easy for you, and obviously what we can do is we can get the booty bands, and I'll leave a link in the description. I'm gonna pick some of these up. Put these bands above your knees, and we can repeat the same thing. So feet straight, knees out, squatting down as deep as you feel comfortable, making sure that that knee doesn't want to cave in, keep those knees out as far as possible. Now these bands are great because they force you to engage a lot of those hip muscles that we need to keep the knee in a good position. If you don't, the band will pull your knees together, essentially emphasizing that bad shape. So the booty bands are a great way to access and retrain those hip muscles in a short amount of time. The third part of this equation, essentially, when we're talking about the hip is that you also need to have enough hip range of motion or rotational range of motion to get into that position. So if you're doing a squat and we know that we want you to be out here, for example, if you can't actually get out there, then your knee is definitely gonna end up in this position 
you don't have the ability to express that further. So a great way to improve that hip external rotation, specifically at the hip, is with what's called the pigeon stretch. Now I'd recommend most people do this on a chair or a table because it does require less range of motion to get into this position. But I'll show you on the floor here, the pigeon stretch is a great way to improve that external rotation at the hip, allow that knee to be translating out further, unloading that ITB going forwards. The position itself basically is an externally rotated position. So we want to get you to drop that front knee down, drop those hips down as far as you feel comfortable. We want to get you to hold this for 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, whatever you feel comfortable with. Give that muscle a squeeze. So tense your glutes, push your feet or your foot and your shin back into the ground. Hold that for a few seconds, then relax. You should find that you can drop down a little bit deeper straight away. And then what you'll find is as you're doing this, you'll hopefully see this on me straight away, is when you squat down, you should feel like now you have extra range of motion to work in. Those three exercises are really important exercises that I find clinically that my patients need to do to change the way that they're loading that ITB up. It's not enough just to treat your symptoms anymore. If you want a realistic change in this long term, particularly if it's stopping you from doing what you want to do athletically, you've got to have a broader conversation about what else is going on around that. I really hope that was helpful. Um, please let know in the comments down below how it goes for you. But with that being said, see you in the next one.